Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Inside the League. I am your host, Nick Pataglia. My guests this week won two Super Bowls, one with the Pittsburgh Steelers and the other with the Green Bay Packers. Since retiring in 2012, he's taken his game from the gridiron to the music studio. Former NFL safety Anthony Smith joins me. You played in uh, Syracuse, Green Bay, and Pittsburgh. My first question is, which place had the worst winners? You know what? That's a tough question, but man, I'm really trying. It's not the Syracuse and Green Bay because Syracuse, like you get so much snow, and then Green Bay is just they get a lot of snow, but it's just so cold, man. I would probably say Green Bay. It's just too cold. Yeah, I know. Like Syracuse, for example. Like I'm from there, and. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it's crazy because it's like I remember one year, man. It was May, it was May, it was Mother's Day, and I was about ten years old, and it was snowing on Mother's Day. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you would ask who got the craziest weather, oh, Syracuse has that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, uh, you were drafted in the, by the Steelers in the third round back in '06. Uh, when you were a rookie and you were heading towards your first NFL training camp, how did your mindset and preparation change, if at all, going from your first mini camp to your first training camp in the NFL? Uh, it, it really didn't, man, because it was all uh, I always had in my in my head, man. Just stay focused, again. work hard, and, you know, you'll make it and be what you are. So I just kept that same attitude and the same focus, and I went in there and did what I did, made a couple big plays and kept oh, 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 oh. season game and uh, ended up having a you know, pretty good career over there. Uh, when you took the field at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh for the first time as a rookie, what was the first thought that came to your mind? Was the feeling of like, you know, I, I made it, I'm here? What was your first thought when you stepped on that field for the first time? Oh, man, you just be like, man, I made it. I made it. And then, you know, you got to go out there and actually, once the first whistle blows and you're actually in the game, that's when it really hits you. Like, okay, now I'm really here. But, you know, through the warm-ups and stuff, you like, I made it, I'm finally here. But once that whistle blows, it's Post the stamp on it. Who was the toughest, being a safety, you went against many great NFL receivers in your career. Who was the toughest receiver you had to cover? Oh, I was the toughest receiver. I never personally had to cover anyone one on one, but one of the toughest guys, um, shoot. One of the toughest guys to keep your eye on is Chad because he, run a, he runs a lot of his own routes within the own system routes. Chad Johnson. Chad Johnson. He was, he was one of the tougher guys. Uh, and then you got the bigger guys, they Fitzgerald. They used their, their, they're very good at using their body position. So, I mean, it's a lot of dudes. Man, it's just everyone has their own, you know, attributes and qualities. So it's kind of, you can always put one guy above another. Being an NFL player who moved around a lot, you spent time in Green, Green Bay, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, Tennessee. What kind of mental effect did the moving, constant moving have on you as a player, and how much of a percentage did it play in you retiring after the 2012 season? You know what? It'll, uh, based on, like you said, it's mental, how strong the mental is, it can really play with you because everyone wants to be stationary. Like, you know, you don't experience that in like, you get the moving around. It's tough on guys because you kind of got to explain everything to everyone where you're going to be the next year and all these questions and stuff. So you'd rather be like, I'm going to be here, this is what I'm going to be You know, it's not like that for a play. But, uh, it, was, it was a challenge, and it was fun at the same time. It was, I got to see and do and experience new defenses and play with different people. And, uh, other than that, it, I really don't like it too much. I'd rather be stationary. Uh, is there anything you might have done in your career that you wish you'd done differently? Favorite NFL memory?
that going on, that kind of, you know, my stamp, you know, who I was and believe, you know, so I just kept that going on, like, that reputation of being a big hitter kind of, you know, stuff with me, so that's kind of one of my favorite things. Uh, how do you feel about the rule changes the NFL's made on the defensive side of the ball? I mean, I played college football. I was on the offensive side. I was a wide receiver in college. And quite frankly, I, it was kind of angered me because just the way that, you know, I think it's gotten a little softer in the league. What, uh, what was your take on the new rule changes in the NFL, especially the new one about the running backs not being able to lower their heads anymore? Like some of the rules, I understand, but it's never cautionary. Other stuff we're trying to, they're trying to take the way the natural things of the game, like running back, ducking his head or you know, bending over to, to run over the defender. The defender, you can't take that away, and that's something. I don't, if they're running straight up, you know, they're going to mess around and get their chest can't be broken or something like that. So it's kind of one of the rules where it doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't like it. I don't support it. And, you know, I think it's just, who was the one NFL quarterback from the past? If there was somebody like a Hall of Famer, you know, quarterback you could have like played against, who would it be? How long have you been interested in working in the music industry? You're a rapper now. Um, how long have you been interested in going into the music industry? Well, being a So your Twitter handle is Ant King Smith, and pretty much every tweet you do, you have either crown or, or the hashtag King. What led you to using that hashtag as a as a kind of being a part of your life? It's just that word in general, that word King. What does that word King mean to you as a person? you think it's important for a pro athlete to think about life after their playing career? Honestly, right, right where you start, honestly, you know what it does. It has to end. I know it's a fairy tale. None of us want to end, but, you know, someday it's going to end. So, you know, everybody can go prepared into it with something that they're going to do outside of it afterwards. You know, that would be great. But a lot of guys, they that's not their core focus, so it's it's really not planning into the head to you know, be business minded and do all that stuff while you're playing. So a lot of guys don't really look start looking into it until they're on their way out. So I can tell the young guys to start looking into it a little bit earlier in their career, and that's what I can tell them. So other than diving into the music industry, what's the one thing you're able to do now as a retired NFL player that you couldn't do when you were in the league? I have a few, uh, few businesses, man. Uh, Coastal Drake, uh, being flat out of heels. Shoe line, I have some few. All right, here's my last question. Over the years, there have been many pro athletes who've decided to enter the music industry. You know, Shaq, Kobe, even the Macho Man Randy Savage had a rap album. What separates you from those other athletes in terms of style and personality? Well, for me, like one thing about me is that music, I know it's music is real. It's supposed to be real. It's supposed to be from the heart. Like I said, it's all factual, and I don't know how the other athletes went into it. Um, I don't know if they let other people write for them and, you know, just try to come up with chemical music. But that wasn't my, my focus going into it. So I never really got to listen to all the you know, former athletes who tried to cross over to the music industry's music. But I know mine is real and everybody I presented it to so far was already 